hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. We are going to talk about uh, orthogonal projection in this uh, short lecture. We will talk about how you know we can use an operator, a linear operator in a vector space to do something called ortho orthogonal projection onto a subspace. Uh, in the subsequent lectures, we will see some very important applications of this. Uh, but the idea of this is actually quite simple in small dimensions one can uh, visualize this very easily. We already saw a little bit of it in a very simple case. As we go forward, we will study more about uh, this idea. Okay? So, let us get started. Okay, quick recap, uh, we have been studying vector spaces over real and complex fields. We know their association with uh, matrices and linear maps and uh, the four fundamental subspaces, solving linear equations, eigenvalues and eigenvectors, how they are defined and how uh, uh, the invariant subspaces simplify the matrix representation into a diagonalizable matrix in some cases. And then we studied inner products, norms, orthogonality, orthonormal basis and that is where we are right now. We looked at orthogonal complement and uh, we will put all that into some use in, in defining orthogonal projection. Okay? So, that is uh, that is where we are uh, currently. Okay. So, uh, firstly, let me begin with general linear maps. Uh, let us say you have a subspace of V and uh, you want to think of constructing an operator, not just any operator in the vector space, but uh, an operator whose range will be say equal to U okay? or maybe contained in U. Okay? So, I have put equal to here, but range is contained in U or equal to U or something like that. So, the range has got to do with the subspace that you have chosen. Okay? So, is that possible? Is that is that uh, feasible or am I asking for something which is too much? Uh, well, it turns out yes. In fact, there are quite a few, right? Uh, you can, uh, you know, start with, so how do you specify uh, linear map T? You have to, linear operator T, you have to look at the basis for V, any basis that you like. And uh, for each VI in the basis, I have to say what T maps it into. So, as long as uh, T maps each vector here into something in U, right? You will always have the range being inside U. Okay? In fact, you can make it equal to U by choosing uh, you know, enough independent vectors inside U in this uh, for mapping. Okay? So, this seems like it is easy to do. right? So, I can make a linear operator in this fashion uh, very easily. So, I can send a vector from my vector space into the subspace of choice. Okay? So, out of all these kind of choices, there is one special choice which is called orthogonal projection and it has a lot of powerful properties and uh, it is one specific linear operator which will take any vector into the subspace U or onto the subspace U and uh, in, a, in a particular way this orthogonal projection sort of way. I will describe what that is uh, as we go along, but this is the context and you can keep this in mind then also remember that there are many uh, possible operators which can take you into a space out of them, this orthogonal projection is a little bit special. So, we will see uh, what is special about it as we go along. Okay, so, quick recap of orthogonal complements. We saw that uh, in a previous lecture. Uh, supposing you have a subspace of a vector space, we define the orthogonal complement as the collection of all vectors such that the, the such all vectors that are orthogonal to every vector in U, right? So, that is how uh, we define the orthogonal complement. We saw this wonderful property that u and u perp, the orthogonal complement of u is denoted u perp, u and u perp have a direct sum which is equal to the entire vector space v. Okay? So, we saw that. And how do you find u perp? I gave you this little method here. There are other methods also, but this method is you start with an orthonormal basis for u, you extend it into an orthonormal basis for v and then u perp is simply the extended vectors that you have. Okay? So, the orthonormality is important here and that gives you all that you want for u perp. Okay, this is a very quick and easy way for doing uh, constructing u perp and finding it out. Okay? And uh, here is a little bit of a more of an explanation of what can happen here. So, if you take an arbitrary vector v in the entire vector space, how do you find its uh, coordinate representation in an orthonormal basis, in this chosen orthonormal basis? You have this very simple formula, right? because it is orthonormal, you simply have to take the inner product okay, with respect to which it is orthonormal. Okay, v comma e1 times e1 plus dot 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 entirely. Okay? So, this gives you v, the entire vector v. And you can quickly identify two vectors, right? one in u and one in u perp, right? 
this is uh, not mentioned here, but this belongs to u perp. Okay, and the sum of these two guys, u plus u perp, is equal to v. Okay, that just directly comes from the way this uh, you know ortho orthonormal basis property behaves. Because it's orthonormal, you have this very simple expression for v, and because it's such a simple expression, it sort of splits into two two halves, u and u perp. So you are able to identify here from the orthonormal basis extension uh, v as the sum of two vectors u and u perp and they add up to v. And we also know that this is unique, right? This u is unique. Irrespective of whatever orthonormal basis you pick, this u ends up being unique. You can, you can prove that as well, right? So that property we know, okay? So let's, let's see an example of this and sort of see how this works in uh, practice. So here's a very simple example. In class, I tend to do simple examples to give you an idea of how this whole thing works. Here is a u, right? I'm, I'm, I'm doing this example in R4, right? You can evidently see that. This example is in R4, okay? Uh, start with a very simple uh, subspace. It's uh, spanned by these two basis vectors, uh, 1, 0, 0, 0 and 0, 1, 0, 0. This is a clearly a basis. Uh, I'll do an orthonormal basis extension. It's very easy to do, okay? It's a standard basis, right? So I extend it in this fashion. So I quickly identify u perp as the span of the remaining two guys. That's easy. And any v, I've taken an example v here, 1, 0, 1, 1. And it can easily, quite easily be seen as u plus u perp. And that's just 1, 0, 0, 0 plus 0, 0, 1, 1. You can see that this one uh, belongs to u perp. This one belongs to u. And uh, I mean, if you want, you can write it down in the clear way as before the, the inner product, right? So, so how do you identify the coefficient? You take the inner product of these guys. So you see this is 1, this is all 0, okay? So you get 1, 0, 0, 0 as the u part. For the u perp part, you see that the first one is 0, second one is 0, third and fourth. It's quite trivial to see that that formula works, okay? So I'm going to do the same thing but with a different basis. So you can see here, uh, these two are equal. They are equal but the basis is different, okay? So different basis. It's uh, another basis. It is also orthonormal, okay? So this is also orthonormal. You can check that it's an orthonormal basis, okay? But it is not uh, same as the standard basis. It's a, it's a different basis. So that hopefully gives you uh, another example. I just wanted to show what, what happens if you take another orthonormal basis, right? So if you take this orthonormal basis, things worked out like this. What if you take another orthonormal basis and do something else with it? Uh, here is an orthonormal basis extension, okay? So I've taken this guy and I've extended it uh, to a basis for the entire uh, vector space V. I'm putting this one here simply to indicate that this is a different basis, okay, from the previous one, from the standard basis that we had. Uh, so U perp, now you can again identify is, uh, so you can see U perp is also the same as this, right? So it's the same thing, but the basis is different, okay? So a different orthonormal basis has come. Now if I take V in this basis, right? In this new basis, I'm taking a vector v. You can write it as u plus u perp and uh, that would again be 1, 0, 0, 0 plus 0, 0, 1, 1. So if you, if you want to see why that is so, uh, you can see, you know, so, so this v, maybe I should write it down in more detail. So this v, uh, so let's call it, I'll call this e1, this one e2, this is e3 and this is e4 just for convenience. So what is going to be V comma E1, the inner product of V and E1. So that's going to be uh, 1 by root 2 times E1 plus uh, 1 by root 2 uh, times E2, right? So I'm taking the inner product here with this. No, I think did I make a mistake? Let me just strike it out. No, that's correct. I think that was correct. I don't know why I wrote that out. Plus, uh, these two uh, would again work out to something, right? So, so if you do v comma e3, that's going to be root 2 times e3 plus I do one in a product uh, with this uh, 
this guy I am going to get 0, right. So, this, this the last one just works out as 0, ok. So, you do not have an E4 component in this, right. So, this is how uh, it works out, ok. And uh, that is V in uh, written in uh, this basis if you, if you want to write it out like that, ok. And uh, what is the U part? So, these two together will make the U part of it, ok. So, the U part is now uh, 1 by root 2 E1 plus 1 by root 2 E2 and that will work out to, uh, you know, you can see that that will work out to 1 0 0 0, right. Uh, that is not in this basis though. So, one needs to be a bit more careful here. So, this is just 1 by root 2 E1 plus 1 by root 2 E2. So, this is in uh, the I am sorry for that, I think I messed, it, messed this up a little bit. So, hopefully let me just clean this up here. So, this 1 is wrong, it should not be there, it should also not be there, ok. So, this is in the original basis. So, even if I pick 1 0 1 1 in the new basis, you see it, it decomposes into u plus u, u, u perp and it goes into the same, same u in the original basis, ok. So, of course, if you write u in the, in the new basis, it will be something else but it goes back to the same u in the original basis. So, that is that tells you the uniqueness of u and u pup. Even if you change the basis with respect to which I am doing the orthonormal uh, uh, basis calculation for uh, figuring out how v decomposes into u and u pup, I will get the same vector u and u pup, ok. So, that is uh, uh, clear enough uh, to see from that point of view, ok. So, hopefully this was uh, a clear enough example. So, I'm, so basically I am showing uh, an example of a vector sp subspace u and two different uh, basis choice for the orthonormal basis and two different orthono orthonormal expansion. So, one ends up being the standard basis, the other ends up being some other basis. And then I try to write a vector, ok, which is 1 0 1 1 in the original basis. I am writing it in terms of u plus u perp and I get 1 0 0 0 and 0 0 1 1. And then I take a vector which is 1 0 1 1 in the new basis, ok. And that will end up being something else in the, uh, in the, in the original basis. But if, because I picked 1 0 1 1 and then when I wrote u plus u pup and when I saw what happens here, the u ends up being the same, right. So, you get the same uh, thing there, it is just that the, it has to work out like that. Okay, yeah, so that works out correctly. Okay, so so u is one zero one one in the in the old basis, and uh, u perp is again root two times this. That will work out as zero zero one one in the old basis. Okay, so you pick uh, one zero one one, but this one zero one one is in the new basis. It works out in this fashion. Okay, so hopefully this example was uh, interesting enough for you to see how uh, the same. You can pick uh, whatever basis expansion you want and you would get uh, uh, the result uh, that you want here, ok. So, writing in terms of u and u perp is illustrated in this fashion, ok. Ok, so let us move on to define orthogonal projection. So, hopefully by now you are convinced that if you have a subspace u, finite dimensional subspace of a vector space v, you can always write it as u plus u perp. And how do you do that? You pick your favorite orthogonal basis for u, extend it to an orthog orthonormal basis for v and then pick up only the u part of it, you get your u, ok. So, that seems like a, a clear enough way and it is unique, uh, unique as per the definition here, ok. So, the orthogonal projection operator p u basically works in this fashion, ok. So, it takes, maps a vector v to u, ok. And what is this u? u is obtained by the decomposition of v into u plus u perp and where u comes from the vector space u and u perp comes from the orthogonal complement u perp, ok. So, clearly this is a linear operator, you do a very cleanly linear operations and it is well defined because u is unique, whatever, I mean just because you change something, u is not going to change, u is going to be the same thing, ok. Alright, so here is an example, ok. So, let us take a simple uh, definition for u u is a one dimensional subspace, ok. So, how do you project, how do you do an orthogonal projection onto a one dimensional subspace u, ok. So, let us take uh, 
one non-zero vector and define the one-dimensional subspace as a span of that non-zero vector x, okay. You see quickly that the orthonormal basis for u is simply x by norm x, right. So, this is the definition for the orthonormal basis and p u will work out as uh, any p u acting on any v, I am sorry, I think I am missing, missing that here, p u acting on any v will simply be v comma x, so v, uh, v comma x uh, divided by norm x square. So, how did I get this? You can, you can see that. Uh, so, any v can be written as, so, so, so you, how would you uh, uh, do this? So, 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 let us say, let us say we call this E1, okay, and you extend E1, so you extend to get a basis E1, E2, so on, En, right. So, this guy gives you u, all of these give you u perp, okay. So, when you write v as v comma e1, e1 plus dot 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 dot, this is the projection u, this part is the u perp, okay. So, when you project, what do you do? You write v as something that belongs to u plus something that belongs to u perp, okay. All that belongs to u perp, you can throw away, only this you keep, okay. And that you can see is the same as this, right. So, what is this? This will work out as, so, so P u times V will work out as V comma x by norm x times E1 again, which is x by norm x. And you can see that is the same as this, right. So, 1 by mod x will come, norm x will come out. So, you will get V comma x by norm x square times x, okay. So, this is how you do projection onto a one-dimensional subspace, okay. So, it just works exactly by that basis extension argument. So, you can also do uh, for a two-dimensional subspace, you take linearly independent x and y and then define u as the span of x, y, you do orthonormal basis, this is just Gram-Smith, right. So, this is uh, just the Gram-Smith followed on uh, two, Gram-Smith done on two vectors, you know how to do this. So, P u times v, I am missing the v again apologies for that, okay. Okay, so P u times V is simply V comma E1, E1 plus V comma E2, E2, right. So, that is it. So, in this case, uh, this is the same as the span of E1 comma E2 and simply the projection on V is simply V comma E1, E1 plus V comma E2, E2, okay. So, it is easy enough to see. So, you find an orthonormal basis, any orthonormal basis that you want for your subspace U and simply do this formula, V comma each of these things times the basis that gives you the orthonormal, orthonormal uh, orthogonal projection of a vector v onto the subspace u, okay. And it does not matter what subspace you pick, what basis you pick here, any orthonormal basis you pick, you will get the same projection operator p u, okay. So, that is something that we saw. So, let us look at matrices for the projection operator, okay. So, we see that projection is a linear operation and we have an operator for it. We have sort of a description for it in terms of inner product, that is not too bad, it is pretty good. But let us see if we can get a matrix, right. So, for that I uh, will specialize to the simple example of V being R n. I look at dot product as the inner product and the standard basis as the basis of choice, okay. So, let us do all this and here is a u, I have taken uh, the vector space uh, u to be a one dimensional subspace, okay. So, this whole thing is a vector, do not think of this as n vectors, this whole thing is one vector. Okay, just one vector x, okay. So, think of it as one vector x, okay. And uh, I know my projection operator acting on v once again, sorry about that, I am missing this p u v here, is simply v comma x divided by norm x square times x, okay. So, that would be, I can rewrite this, right. See, notice, notice this, see in, in a R n for instance, v comma x, you can write in matrix form if you have the, you know, coordinate expansions you can write it as x transpose v, you can also write it as v transpose x, both of these are the same, okay. So, this is something that uh, I did not maybe emphasize too much when we discuss inner product. In R n, where the inner product is simply, uh, you know, the dot product, x, v comma x inner product is the same as x transpose v, you can also write it as v transpose x, both of these are the same, okay. Important to understand this. So, once I know this, this inner product v comma x, I can write it as x transpose v, okay. So, there is a reason why I am writing it as x transpose v, 
If you write it as V transpose X, it will not work out quite so nicely. So, this is X into X transpose into V, I can write this as, right. So, this is all scalars, no. So, I can push it to this side if I want. So, I simply, I get that X into X transpose into V is the same as X times X transpose times V, okay. See, so remember X is a column vector. I am thinking of X as a column vector. So, X transpose will become a row vector and V also is a column vector, okay. So, X times X transpose will be a matrix, N cross N matrix and then V will multiply on the right, okay. So, this P U which is the operator can be identified now with 1 by norm X squared X X transpose, is it? So, this is the crucial thing. This is the matrix of a oper op projection operator. Okay, so it will look like this. Okay, you can see it's it's quite simple. It's x x transpose. So it's a it's a rank one n by n matrix. Okay, and then multiplied by one by norm x squared. So this becomes the projection operator. So you can generalize this. It's not very difficult to generalize this. So you find an orthonormal basis for your subspace u onto which you want to project. Okay, and then if you want to do p u times v forgetting this in every single slide here. If you want to do P u times V, we should do it here also, okay. That will be simply V comma E 1 times E 1 so on, okay. So, this we know you can pick any orthonormal uh, basis that you like for U and P u times V simply becomes this. So, now every V comma E 1 I can write as E 1 transpose V, okay. And then if you do that, you can pull the V common outside and you will simply get E1, E1 transpose plus dot, 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 EM, EM transpose times V, okay. And you identify this PU with this matrix that you got, E1, E1 transpose plus dot, 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 EM, EM transpose, okay. So, this is your N cross N matrix which represents projection to onto the subspace U which is spanned by an orthonormal basis E1 through EM. So, you see how this is coming through. So, this probably gives you a good idea. Uh, you do not need the 1 by norm x squared because you know all these EIs are all already orthonormal. So, they do not enter the picture. So, it just becomes uh, something like so. So, projection onto a subspace when you have an orthonormal basis finding the matrix is very easy, okay. You can repeat it quite easily for the uh, for the complex case also, right. So, instead of uh, you know being x transpose v, it will be you know x bar transpose v or something like that. And then that would, so instead of e1, e1 transpose, it will be you know even bar E1 transpose or something like that. So, you, sh you, sh you should take the conjugate in one of these things and you will get what you want. Is that okay? So, finding the matrix for the projection operator is also very easy, okay. So, so you have to get familiar with projection. It, it seems like very easy uh, thing to think of. It is not very complicated, but we will use some of these properties in some non-trivial way in uh, going forward, okay. Uh, so, here are some properties, quick properties. One can uh, very easily derive from uh, the definitions I made so far. Uh, supposing you start with a finite dimensional subspace of V and V is some vector in the vector space, okay. Uh, here are a few properties, quick properties you can easily write down. If the projection operator operates on a vector that is already inside you, you will not get anything different. In fact, you will get exactly U. So, on the operate, on the inside the subspace U, the projection operator is identity. Okay, so that's nice to know. Outside, what does it do? It makes it zero. Okay, as an outside meaning in the complement, it makes it zero. And there's also many various vectors which are outside u, and which are not in the complement also, right? So you'll have u plus u bar, where u perp. Then something else interesting would happen. Okay, so but this is the this is the story as far as how the projection operator, if you restrict it to either u or u perp, how does it behave? Okay, on u it becomes identity, on u perp it becomes uh, 0, okay. So, that is, it sort of correlates with this uh, description I have for the matrix, okay. If you think about what this matrix is, you will see that uh, correlates very well, okay. Uh, range of PU is U itself, null space of PU is U perp, okay. These are all easy consequences. And if you do V minus PU V, you get something which is in U perp, right. So, that is also very clear from the way we defined how orthogonal projection works. 
if you do v minus p u v that belongs to u pop okay and if you do p u squared you get p u itself okay so whatever vector you have you know if you if you square it you get the same thing as p u okay so just think about it if you, if you repeatedly apply projection you, you apply projection once you got to some point that's already inside you if you apply projection again it's not going to change it remains the same so it's enough if you apply it once right so it's sort of p u squared is a strange uh, matrix or strange operator it's, you you can't repeat it and the second time you repeat it doesn't do anything new it just gives you the same thing okay and uh, here's an interesting result that uh, norm of p u v the norm of the projection is lesser than the original vector so you lose some magnitude when you project to a smaller subspace and uh, th there are proofs for all of this and this one is a direct consequence of the pythagorean identity right so v splits into its projection on u plus something which is orthogonal to that okay so when you have two orthogonal things adding to give you a vector the norm is the sum of those two so since you are losing something definite you will get the norm for the projection being lesser than this okay so these are all properties so projection is a interesting operation that you do on a vector you can project onto a subspace of your choice orthonormal basis plays a big role in the projection and projection is a very interesting operator in the sense you do it once you go to the subspace and after that it doesn't doesn't much happen to it nothing much happens to it after that and you lose something when you project right so the, the difference between the original vector and the projection is orthogonal to the uh, to the projection projected vector okay so this is something uh, interesting so in fact you can rephrase this a little bit also see v minus puv is orthogonal to puv is that okay so this is a good result to have because this belongs to u pop this belongs to u okay so there's a part of v which sort of so it's, you're splitting v into two one which is in u one which is in u pop and uh, the difference is orthogonal okay so this is something important we'll we'll uh, take advantage of this later okay projection is important because it solves a very important and interesting minimization problem involving subspaces and norms and distances and all that so we'll we'll take this up in the next lecture okay thank you